last time. Before I left, I was talking about financial abundance to solve the problems. And I want to go through that even today. Uh, I was talking about David, chapter 17 of 1st Samuel. And we saw how God gave him the grace to solve problems that nobody could solve. There is a specific problem assigned for each one of us to solve in this life. And that problem contains our wealth. God is not pleased when we suffer and find it very hard to To live when we struggle in finances. The whole of last month I've been talking and uh, I'll continue this because he, he says in Deuteronomy 8.18, I think we look at it together, he says, I am the one that gives you power. He says, verse 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. Now we talked about wealth. We talked about wealth is not money. Wealth are those possessions, assets that people have that produces money. You can talk of a building That somebody rents for other money just comes direct from there. You can talk of having a business that generates millions. Uh, what else? What produces money continuously? Schools. We must have it. We have I was studying out of the school around. I'm told in Three months they collect over 1.7 million. The amount they use is not more than 1 million in the three months. How much money are they give you? Every three months. What else? TV station, radio station, you put a radio station, TV station somewhere, millions of money come. That is where we are heading this year in Jesus' name. We will never be poor life beyond salary. When you say life beyond salary. Yeah, life beyond salary. I want to I want to earn my money to grace. Not salary. I know this is a higher language, you will understand. <laughs> huh? Saudi. Oh you're not hearing me. Wow. Without us. I'm saying life beyond salary. That's what we are talking about. Uh, we, last time we saw how anointed man can cause enough finances. Now, you people who hear me here, uh, you hardly hear these teachings in these other churches. It's, it's very rare. And uh, I want you to, to be ready to hear what you had here elsewhere and you help you try to develop faith in what I'm saying. Because I've experienced God in a bigger way and I believe in a God of more than enough. The word El Shaddai in the book of uh, in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 17. God called Abraham. You know, Abraham was so disparate because he doesn't have a child. So disparate that he could try this, he could try the other one, he could try. And God told him, 
in chapter 17 I am God Almighty that word Almighty means El Shaddai and the right word for it is God of the God of too much or the God of more than enough God can meet your needs beyond your needs and let me put it this way God can meet your needs using you you can have more than enough until you just give it out to others that's the life you want to live not this life that we struggle I want to do this the other day when we went live on C5 fm from 8 to 9 they told me now you have to pay 40,000 when you negotiate that's the least you should have you should have been you should be paying 200k but I'm reducing it to 40 no, I didn't tell you from 10,000 to 40 are we able to meet that need are we able looking at me like what yes we can meet more than that we can have more than enough and for me I do not want to beg human beings in the name of financial problems I even as a pastor I depend on nobody except God there's something I'm learning about giving and I've seen God meet my needs in a way that I don't know. Every time I go to Nairobi, I get over 30,000. Every time I go. Amen. Every time I plan, I'm, uh, 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 the other day when we are going to Mombasa, it's over 40k. That's not even the salary that somebody can give me this year. I learned that there's always good things about it if we give it. And it's about giving. Nothing else. Giving. I'm saying it's about giving. We can easily set ourselves free from lack and poverty by learning to, to give. I mean, we can. We were not designed to be slaves of others. So he says, I am the one that gives you the power to make wealth, not, not money. Not money. You can have enough. I mean, you can have more than enough in this world. So he says, I am the one that gives you. Now, what is that power we talked about last time? We said this the ability to solve problems. And looking at everything around this town. Anybody who's trying to make money, they're trying to solve some specific problems. There are those who are solving the problems of people who have big monies. There are those who are trying to solve people, the problem of people who have small money. All kinds. Even a church like this is here to solve problems. Is here to solve problems. Even a church like, like this. Somebody must feel that their problem is being solved when they learn it. And especially in church, problem of the people who are looking for God is the only one that is solved. Problem of people who seek God, you know, the people who just come to church because it is sad. And they will never even find any meaning in a church. They just walk out and walk, walk in and walk out. The people who, the first day they walk inside here, they meet God. The first day. That those who can sit here for a whole year, they don't see God. So there's a way God solves your problem. So let's look at Joseph today. Now there are three ways, or can even more, but by which God has God has deposited something in each one of each one of us. And I'm talking about money that you make until everybody knows that you have enough money. Not a job. I know maybe cry for jobs. Thank God for jobs. That's where we begin. 
But we can go beyond that. I'm saying we can go beyond, beyond that. Where you have enough and you're ready to give it out. That is what God, you know, if it is God, let me make this statement. One of the reasons why we make small money is because we are depending what humans have taught us to look for money. Not what God has not, not the ways of God. Like for example, you are taken to school, start a specific course, then get salary at the end of the, the month. Thank God for that. I am not saying that is bad. But if you choose to to follow God's ways of causing you have finances, it will be more than the way the one that you have been taught in school. Like for example, we are considering a man by the name Joseph today. In chapter 37 of Genesis, one of the things that God has blessed this man with is the gift of interpreting dreams. The gift of interpreting dreams. So in chapter 37, he begins seeing some dreams about his life. And he begins speaking to others. Uh, let me read chapter number 37. Verse 5. And Joseph dreamt a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said to them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamt. For behold, we are binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheep rose, arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves bow, stood round about, and made obeys to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Now Joseph is second last one. The truth of the matter is he was the first one. His mother was the one to be married first. What happened? There was some bit of extra. That happened. You see, he still remained the first one. So when he came, he, he was born last. When he was to be born first, something happened there. You can imagine, irrespective of what people can do against you to bring you down, you can still remain. It doesn't matter how many years he came later, he still remained. He might have born later, but still, God had a purpose that the first poor person who is to be born of, who is the mother? Rachel. The first born of Rachel will still remain the first. Sometimes there's a way things happen in the generation. And you are things want to bring you down. Now, yeah, he might have born last, second last. That means he's number eleven of all others. But one of the things that you cannot not ignore, or you cannot ignore, is his commitment to God and to run from evil. His commitment to run from evil. All his brothers, if you study their lives as many as they are, most of them are known by the sin of humanity. The sin of immorality is dangerous. It kills some. Joseph chose to remain pure 
before God. Even when the wife of Potiphar tried to catch him, he said, I cannot, I think, look at that, he says, I cannot do this wickedness before who? There are only two. There are only just do this wicked act. I cannot do before who? Before God. The truth of the matter is when you dedicate your life to God, run from evil, you will see your future with your eyes. And it will always be greater than the future of them that are involved in sin. So his eyes were open to see him rising above. At this point, the Bible says he's 17 years old. Is there someone 17 years old? You ask how many? How old are you? Huh? Very 17. So this one is yours. No, no. <laughs> was 17 years old. But he saw himself rising above us, above all. Until even his parents reach a point where they could come and put out. The truth is it happened. Became the second man in charge in a superpower nation, and everybody naturally respected the office that he sat in. But that vision was revealed when he was 17 years old. That dream, you see, that is where it began. It all began. So that when he looks at the dream, he can tell you that. The future. He began with his own. He began with his own. And nobody else could interpret dream like Joseph. Nobody else like Joseph. When God, if God wants to bless you, you just need to put your ways right with Him. He will drop an idea into your mind. Yes, you become a billionaire. Yeah, these days, millions are too small. Praise the Lord. So you see, there, are also the place of holiness is emphasized in this place. If you read chapter number 38, one of his brothers made a terrible wickedness sin. The Bible talks about Reuben. Who went to his what his father's way? Very terrible sin that you cannot even think. The sin of immorality is the terrible. It will make you lose everything. One of the things that happens to men who are used to women, all their possessions, everything they have goes to them. To the ladies that that's how we come back. It didn't just begin in our day. It began in the time of. You didn't know there's no sin that is new. All sin has been in human flesh. But don't think about this man. He decided the environment might be so corrupt. The people around him might be so corrupt. So corrupt. In the generation we are living in now, where we expect Jesus to come. We have to be so careful. I always tell you to be so careful even about other believers who go to other churches. Forget about non-believers. I sometimes I wonder how we can mix with non-believers. And you sit there, discuss talk, define yourself in the, the way of thinking they think, the thought they no. One of the reasons why mass the mass of believers are not recognized is because. They believe in the ideas of non-believers who are around them. They hear them and then they say, we worship the same God. Did you do what? No, no, we don't, don't worship the same God. If this God of heaven and earth is the one that I worship, he can make me unique in the whole county of others. The truth of the matter is, all of us, irrespective of when you are born or how you are born, God has greatness for you. If you can see this, yesterday we were talking in the BBS. 
Ishaq Yaqub. God said that if you choose to commit yourself to God and you start to do something, you will also do something that will make you unique among others. We don't worship God who is no. God is strict. If you are strict with him, he is strict. Like for example, if you say I am serious with you, you will also be serious with me. And you know he is serious as with you. All others will see. You cannot hide if you met God. You cannot hide. People will know that you met God. Even them that oppose you, they know. They know. Somebody called me from Maria. Maria Kanyo Sabuno is a place called Sabuno. In around the coast there. You know, I saw you, Pastor. Life called you out to pray for you. No, he has been always against you. <laughs> and what I do. Just when I saw him coming out, I was just watching on the TV. And then, so before he opposes everything in one charge, and then it happened that his pastor died and he was so close to the pastor. Was so she, then he, he became the pastor. Now, when you saw this, he said, I want you to guide me on how to run this church. Amen. You, there are things that God is doing in somebody's life. You cannot, even if you close your eyes, you see. And they come for you. Yes. God makes you unique. It's not about one person. It's about everybody who is serious with him. With him. So, Joseph was so serious with God. Desires to see the future, his own future. You know, when you read from verse 1, I don't want to read there. The Bible says, Whenever he went out, goes out with his brothers to look after the flocks. And then when he comes back, he tells his father the evil that they were doing or they were speaking. And if he comes to his father and he says the evil they were doing, do you think he's part of that evil? I'm asking a question. If he's reporting the evil they did, is he part of that evil? He's not. That is how he accessed. What, what for him was an eye opening to the future. If I became now the means through which he will gain his wealth. In chapter number 40, chapter 39 is where we see him in the house of Potiphar. And where the Bible says Potiphar loved him. They, they, they sold him. There's another evil. <laughs> the brother sold him like an animal for 30 pieces of sin. They sold him. There's another evil. How do you say that? How do you say, let's kill him. Look at the evil you know them. Evil. And then they saw it. They didn't know that it's, they are sending him to a land where he will go and become great there. All that is evil. If you have any evil against them, you will not be up. You go. Evil will always drop you down. You cannot rise up. So now here we see also. Potiphar's wife tempting him, asking him to lie with, with him. He says, he says no. The Bible says several. She tried to speak to him, he refused. And then one day when he just entered into a room, she followed him. He, he released them. She caught the, the jacket. And then he, he came out of the jacket. And he disappeared. And then she cooked the story. No story because I was there. Who want to spoil the name and speak about what you did to him. So they send him to 
this place called uh, uh, prison. And then in that prison, then the prison warden, and the Bible says, recognize this man. He's a bit composed. Looks calm and very, very organized. And then, as he was serving the people, you know, and then he was specifically sent to serve the prisoners that came from the palace, Egypt, where Pharaoh stays. He was assigned there. What do you think about it? The man that he was serving in the name of Potiphar, he's somebody who serves in the palace. The person who was serving in the house, for whom he was sold. Now, even the people assigned to him to take care of in prison are them that was serving Pharaoh. One is doing cake, another one is serving him with drinks. The Bible says in verse 6, and Joseph came chapter 40 of chapter 40 of the book of Genesis, verse 6, and Joseph came in unto them in the morning, and looked upon them, and behold, they were served. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the word of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And he said unto them, and they said unto him, We have dreamt a dream, and there is no one interpret of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not, in, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me them. I'll pray. And the chief butler told his dream. So Joseph to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. Yeah, those things. I don't want to read it all. Then he gave interpretation then. He had the other one. He gave interpretation. And you know, it happened exactly the way he, he said. One was restored back to one was restored back to to the office where he has been serving. Another one was crucified after three days. That was exactly what he said happened. The Bible says they were sad. When they had the story, they were sad. When they had the story. But this man brought solution to them. Did he gain anything there? There's nothing was given to him. Nothing was given to him. Because Joseph said, if you go back to Palace, tell Pharaoh, I have been accused falsely. That is why I am in this prison. This man, the Bible says in verse 33 of chapter 40 of Genesis, yet did not the chief battler remember Joseph, but forgot him. So, uh, I think there is something about Joseph God was dealing with before he releases him to, his, to that financial abundance or to wealth. Because this man is still feels like you know there's something called self-pity where you want everybody to to feel you that you have problems this is the problem where joseph is having here he said i know you'll be taken back this one will die after three days i think the one who dies will not help me <laughs> let me consider on the one that will go back to the palace if you reach there what will you do tell pharaoh that uh, they brought me here god does not even for him God can bring you help himself he can send somebody this week when we were in the class uh, somebody is an engineer he's part of the students we study with he said pastor I feel moved and instructed by God to support the work that you're doing in Marsabit. 
I just sat down. I sit there, I sit behind me there. Yes, I, I feel moved to support the work that you're doing and I will be doing something much. And since I will not, I will not hinder myself or limit myself to say a specific amount, one thousand or two. This if depending on how much I get every month, if I get uh, ten, I send it ten. If I get fifty, fifty. If I get hundred, money cometh. Amen. Money. Money cometh. Money comes. He just sat, I, I don't know what you told me. He told me, just tell me what I doing. So I told him. The books that I took there last month has worked because they were looking at some of the problems we are doing. If God has a help for you, it will come. You don't need to beg. Just wait. Just read how he's just look at how he's spoke. I wanted to look at how he's spoke to this man. Verse 20. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all the servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler and his buttership again, and he gave the cup unto the Pharaoh, and he hung the other one. I want to see that verse that say, where this guy was speaking to him and said, verse 14, but think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. <laughs> when you are restored back, remember me, tell Pharaoh please, God does not want self pity He's big enough to handle your problems. When you reach a level where it is not people who supply your need, it is God. You know that. Let me repeat that. When you reach a point where it is not good, it's not people, but God who supply meet your needs, and you just believe in Him in your is the man that trusts on the man the Bible says as long as you see the reason as to why we blame people our relatives our friends our because they refuse to believe who something you expect until you stop blaming and thinking that God is the only one that you need you will not have what God has for you so we need to grow up I think that two years is when now I think he might have also realized the man who went there has forgotten him. He has forgotten him. After two years, verse 1 says, chapter 41. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamt and behold, he stood by the river. And those dreams that you know, that he dreamt. So the other man. He's remembering Joseph now. In other words, those two years, God is still expecting this man to, to mature. Those two years. So, verse 9 says, Then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. It is not your fault. It is in God's time. Somebody has not matured. <laughs> it's not his fault. If we don't grow in our relationship with God, we'll continue depending on human beings. And it is terrible to depend on things. I mean terrible. I mean terrible. They look on you. They, they despise you all the days of your life. May that never be your portion in Jesus' name. Where people are looking, no, no. That's why sometimes it's good to, to sleep hungry than to beg people who you know are not going to help. They are not good. There's God in heaven. I think there are people who are one of them that are learning to live by faith. These days I sit down and I wonder, how did I go to Nairobi every month? You know, today it is so, now it is so, 
how do I do it? It's so easy that I don't think about my fees. I'm not thinking about my fees. God is taking care of it. Just go, and then I will just be in class. No salary, you know what? And they learned the grace can pay you more than salary. I'm saying the grace can avail more money than the salary that people give us. How you commit yourself to Him. So when Joseph has reached a level where now he cannot depend on anybody except God. He could not cry. You know, when he was telling this man to speak to Pharaoh for him, he's trying to show how he has, somebody has disadvantaged him in life. When he tells him to forgive, he knows why he tells him to forgive. Even when people have done something evil to him, the truth is they have done evil to him. His brothers have done. He's the wife of Potiphar of that. For God, he does not want in any way Joseph to complain about it. Simply says, I forgive you. Not forgiving is cutting yourself off God's permission. If you are still holding to a grudge or some bitterness somewhere, is disconnecting you from God. The day you release that thing is the day that you experience God. That's why sometimes you have so much delays of what God will give us. Because you're still complaining about somebody somewhere. But the day that you, you are now free to forgive and release people, and have some good relationship with them. You know you can have relationship with everybody, even them that have bad intention against you. You have zero thing against them. If they do evil, that is on their own heads. So now is now to, to do. I wanted to read to you now what happened there. How now Pharaoh spoke it out. You know, he brought some people to, to change to give him a solution. They could not. Except this man said, except until this man remembered Joseph. Now, this is what he says in verse 10. Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me inward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief beggar. And we dreamt. Now he's explaining. He's explaining what happened and how Joseph and we dreamt a dream in one night I and he we dreamt each man according to the interpretation of his dream and there was and there was there with us a young man a Hebrew servant to the captain of the guards and we told him and interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream he did interpret and it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto my office, and he, him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shed himself and changed his raiment or clothes and came in unto Pharaoh. Look at that. What took him out of his problems? It was too much, had too much beer. All of them. Hmm? I think that should be stress. All of them. His words are tattered. He is like. So he, the Bible says, immediately they had that. He has this gift they went for. For him. And Pharaoh didn't want to care. The mistake he made. Did he care what brought him there? Even if it was a terrible problem that he has caused, wherever he came from, he never. Know. The Bible says immediately. When your vision or your dreams or your, your gifts and talents come to a point where it can solve people's problem, you'll be sought after. 
you will be sought after. They will look for you. And there is no amount of money that is too much to pay you. There is no amount of money that is as too much. Somebody just looks at how what you have solves problem. And they pay you. You know sometimes like when I bring people around here. The conferences I do here. I know how blessings these people are. I don't measure the money I give them. I give them. I don't measure. Ten thousand is enough. <laughs> Twenty thousand. No. We need to give to people in accordance with how they serve us. Their gifts. That we give abundantly. When you try to negotiate, how much are we going to give this one? How much are you going to give the other one? Sometimes because of limiting people's men of God who come from out there, we lose them. I want to speak in the year 2018. Some you No, know, I was shocked. The money that we used to go there was not given us. Forget about so even the, the cost that we incurred on the road <laughs> was never meant. I went with my whole family. He said, the churches are never going to put. It's not because I am looking after money. But how do you use your own money to have enough expense? Teach people for five days non stop from morning to evening. And then only to come back with debts back. And they celebrate. Wow! Powerful teaching. Powerful. We must give to the people that God has put something in them in accordance with this very gift that has served you. Abundantly. Amen. That's all we Any gift that God gives to you will attract enough to you. Not some small things. No, no, no. It doesn't. It will, it will attract more. Because from here now what we are going to hear is after he solved and he gave that interpretation of the dreams, he became the finance minister of Egypt all his life finance minister. You know the kind of minister we have who is being controlled by the president. This one even the president says I am in your hand. Do to me what you want. He says I am just let me read to you. Imagine if you hear these verses. Verse 77. He says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. And there's punishment again. He says, seven years of famine, which will follow seven years of Papa harvest. Then Pharaoh is saying, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has shown thee all this, God, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house and according, see, thou shalt be over my whose house is this? His very house, for it about the Egypt. Although he might refer to it also as his house, but he's even talking about his house. He says, Thou shalt be over my house, you be over the God. Over. In other words, you are in charge over even me. What does it mean over my house? Even the king himself is under. And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thee. Position of leadership. No position of leadership. I, this big seat is mine. Yours is this other one. But even me that sits in the, on this big seat, your words will rule me. So who is the ruler? 
Joseph is the ruler. And he's the one in charge of since nobody is as good as you. I'm not going to look for anybody to, 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 to store those harvests so that it can take people through the next seven years. He says, I'm not going to look for anybody. You are the one who will be in charge of all these. Now look at the harvest they're going to get in seven years. How much is that? That will, for the next seven years, will keep them free from. I just try to you know, we are talking about wealth here. The harvest you are going to put in place, that will, for, for seven years, that will also, seven years of famine will feed the whole world, not just Egypt. He says, nobody can, in any way, handle this, the abundance of the harvest, and also, somebody who can, at the same time, take care of the seven years of famine, except you. So how much has it piled together? How much? Not for him, not for the whole Egypt and the people around, the nation around them. They are coming from the land of so if Canaan came, it means other cities are like, okay, who is in charge of all this? Just so how much does he have? Is he relying on Sanad here? I'm asking you question. <laughs> how can you feed? Like talk about Kenya, you are feeding the whole Kenya. Then you are feeding so many other nations around here. May that come into your hand this year in Jesus' name. Millions of money in the name of Jesus. This year we must see millions. We are not ending this year without a land cruiser. Amen. You're still thinking. We are not ending this year without a land cruiser. This year, land cruiser will stand here. We are not going to cry about a vehicle like we did in January and February, looking for somebody to give us a vehicle. We'll have our own. Yes. No, you don't believe it. You'll see. Yes. We're not finishing this year without that. Millions, we are going to see it come out there. You see, if you do not create Huh? What God has for you in your mind, you remain living on the small things that you are used to. Where was I yesterday? And then we were talking. Yes, I think at the DBS in church. We talked about, uh, you know, when you own a vehicle in Nairobi, how much do you save in a day? Besides fuel, you park here, you park there, drain, 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 drain. <laughs> If you have a vehicle, you, have a vehicle you, you, you drive there. It is money, 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 money everywhere. So somebody was saying, I need this you. <laughs> and you are just sitting in the deepest class. So they feel like, I got you, but I'm expensive, I don't know what to do. So if that is how we think and what God does for us is <laughs> bigger things than that you see that's why this mind of ours must be extended by the teaching of the word of God otherwise you still remain small you're used to that small hundreds or one thousand or two thousand or five thousand And then you stay there. The inflation is growing. Over a period of time, you know, for those of you who are having some energy, you begin earning. The first time you bought, the first time you buy, God, you thought this is a lot of money. 
the first man when he's got that money. After some few, let's talk about even after here, we the right to pay some people. At a couple of cases, you can expenses in the bank alone. Maybe they are causing some deal. Maybe they are causing. By the time money comes, in a, in a swallow, expenses so that in a swallow pay some people again. That's why our mind must be big. As the years go off, the expenses increases. That means your ability to make more money has to also increase. And the ability to, to make more money will not increase if your mind is still small. What increases, that's why we must begin a world class. Amen. We'll begin next month. So that we I drive some things in your head that will make it so big. So that your mind your mind can accommodate. Your mind can accommodate money. You know many of our minds today accommodate very small money. Very small. Keep out a 50 case in a treasure. Keep out a in a month. I thought that she did in some this is the one I get. Nikipata. Mimi nataka kuona milioni moja kwa account kila mwezi at least. So we can begin then. A million every month. It is possible. Radio station is 5 M. Employing other people some that kind of money. The other day I was listening to personalizes. I pay you one hundred and eighty people in my charge without any stress. One eight. Huh? One eight. So they are waiting for their pay from one man. By the end of the, the month. Why can you think like that? As long as you believe what that one is, you'll have it. Kevin, did you forget that the today is first son? There's something wrong there. Eh? Was first started. Push it up next week now. So I think uh, all I'm saying is if the, the gift that you have, you can one work on it and bring it to a point where it can produce more finances. The gift you have, look at it, where what is it? Things that will take you beyond salary. There is something in you deposited by God. Mine is this that I'm doing. No, this is speaking. If I speak, people get understanding. And the more I speak, the more I create money for myself. And that's why I go to school to, to make this work, think, to make this whatever I'm going to be, a bit better. Shaping myself, I think. Being shaped by people who have excelled and moved far in ministry. As they're speaking to us, we are also rising up in the ministry. So the more, the more we are sharpened, or the, the more you sharpen the skills, your skills, make more money. You must choose to make more money. You say you must choose. Money that will feed you in the others also. I'm saying you must choose to make And God is pleased to put as much money in your hand as you can. And as you can manage. As much money. This one looks very, how do you, this one looks very prosperous, huh? yeah? <laughs> God can put as much money in your hand as you want. If I want to, I was asking how much I can do this flowing. They told me that again. If that money is not there, will I work on this thing? You must work on this thing, this month, before it ends. And we put 
We need to have enough money irrespective of what comes our way and we are in a position to meet the needs. That is where God wants us to be. Reaching where there is nothing impossible to you because of money. Amen. I mean, they are asking me, you know, when I come from class, I can even be far away as the one to get a graduation. You talk about the fact that I was killed as you know, as he said, I was going to go to the If I own a people, so you even know, find out. It is about what they, because they don't feel that I'm spending so much money. It is possible. There is no cost that is too much if it is necessary. God can cause us to have it. Amen. It is all about believing that anything is possible. I am just finishing this year. Next year, I'm beginning diploma. And I finish by the end of next year. So maybe in the, in the, I have already believed it. So as long as I believe it is possible. I don't care about money. But now and then, as I move on. <laughs> yes. I'll finish studying that course. Whenever I'm studying that course, I know at least I am someone. But money cannot hinder me, even in this work that I do. Money cannot hinder us to do whatever we want to do. We do it. Amen. But somebody must get determined. I'm saying somebody must get determined to access what God has for them. Father, we are thankful for speaking to us this morning. Libro sala krata kashana but let it go city be glad in the name of Jesus. Lead to the boat no city be glad. Makotila broshata kapara but let it go city be glad. We give you glory, Lord Jesus, for speaking to us. Those words are right and they are forceful, functional in us as we receive it by faith. It will cause result. And we refuse to lack this year. Thank you for the land cruiser. We have it in the name of Jesus. We have it in the mighty name of Jesus. We have it. We need land like cruiser more than anything else right now. As we move across this city, this land, and speak your word like we have never done it before in the name of Jesus. We are not going to struggle because of a fear. We will not in Jesus' name. We will not libra kasata libra sharaba. The seed we have been planting speaks for us even on this. In the name, of, thank you, Lord, last year this live streaming machine we have got is here. We are getting this and many more other instruments that we need to grow across this place and cause this work happen in a big and a great way. Your word is true, Lord. You are activating in us. This thing that brings enough wealth to us, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we can do our giving as we.